Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Barkheimer from Ebner Elementary. I've been really missing my friends at school and I know all of your teachers are missing you just as much. But we've got to make the best of it, so let's dive right into our next science lesson. As you can see, I'm underwater with all these beautiful fish. Do you hear something? I hear somebody knocking on glass. What is that? Oh, that's my fish. Okay, so apparently I have a talking fish that I didn't know about. Who knew? <laughs> no, really though, we are gonna be talking about fish today. All week long you've been learning about vertebrae, and today we are gonna learn about another type of vertebrae, the fish. So let's jump right in like he said. All right. Fish are a group of animals that are vertebrates, and we know that vertebrates have backbones. They're mostly cold-blooded, and they live in fresh or salt water. And you can see a lot of the pretty color of fish are living in salt water. They're designed to glide through the water with their smooth, streamlined, scaled, covered bodies. There are three groups of fish, the jawless fish, the shark skates and rays, and the bony fish. The first type is the jawless fish. They have an eel-like body with no jaws, and they obtain their food by sucking. So you can see they just suck the food right in through these holes. They have skeletons made out of cartilage instead of bone, and they have no scales. So if you feel your tips of your nose or your ears, those are made out of cartilage. So that's what these, these fish are made out of. Some examples of the jawfish are the lampreys and the hagfish. Kind of scary looking. All right, the next type is the cartilaginous fish, and this group includes sharks, skates, and rays. This group is also made of cartilage, the skeleton. These fish are covered in tooth-like scales called denticles. Denticles are small and pointy, and they make them feel like sandpaper. So if you've ever wanted to know what a shark feels like, sandpaper. So some examples of this, these fish are sharks, skates and skate you may think looks like a stingray the only difference is if you look at the back end of it it doesn't have any barbed wire so you'll know that's a skate and the stingray has the barbed wire on the back and these a lot of times if you're at the zoo you can feel these they have them in um big containers that you can they let you feel how they feel as they're swimming around it's pretty neat Okay, the next type is bony fish. They're the most familiar group of fish that have skeletons made of bones and scales that are made of a bony material. Some examples of these bony fish are catfish, the clown trigger fish, the angler fish, a leafy dragonfish. And looking at that, you wouldn't even know that's a fish. It looks like seaweed floating. I mean, it does a little bit look like a seahorse in that also, but looks like le or seaweed. The scorpion fish. The viper fish, which teeth look very, very scary and sharp. The lionfish, and my um, six-year-old Carter would love this lionfish because he loves lions. And the unicorn fish, which is really neat because it actually looks like it has a horn, like a unicorn. Bony fish do not have limbs. Instead, they have fins to keep them upright and to help them navigate. So think about a boat. The boat has a wheel, a steering wheel, but then it also has a thing called a rudder and it looks like it's shaped like a fin on a fish and it moves back and forth so if they wanna go right, straight, left, and same thing with the fish. The fins help it navigate where it wants to go in the water. Fish use gills for breathing. So oxygen will pass through the water into their blood vessels and then carbon dioxide will pass back out into the water. Fish have a very well-developed nervous system so they can sense everything that's going, around them, going on around them. And most of them have eyes that can see in color, so they can see all those beautiful fish down there swimming around them. The shape of a fish's mouth is a good clue to what the fish will eat. So the larger the mouth, the bigger prey it can eat. The small fish mouth, like our, my pet fish, only eats little plates because he has a tiny, tiny mouth. Bony fish have an air-filled sac called a swim bladder that helps them float. So how they helps them swim and float this air sac. 
All right. The next thing we're going to do before our lesson is over is we're going to watch Brain Pop. I know we always like to watch Brain Pop and Skull. And so we're going to watch Moby, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about fish. My turn to feed Frank and Joey. What are fish? A vertebrate is an animal that has a spine or backbone. Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish are all vertebrates. Fish are the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Many fish have skeletons made of bone, just like we do. But fish like sharks and rays have bodies made of cartilage. Part of your nose and ears are made of cartilage. Most fish spend their entire lives underwater. No, Moby, whales and dolphins are not fish. They're mammals and they breathe with lungs. Fish breathe through gills. Gills are special organs that take in oxygen from the water. Like humans, fish have a heart, stomach, intestines, and other organs. But some fish also have a swim bladder. The swim bladder gets filled with air to help the fish move underwater. Most fish have fins to help them move in the water. The size, shape, and location of the fins help different fish move in turn in different ways. Many fish have scales that cover their bodies. The scales help protect the fish. Some species, such as the clingfish, don't have scales. Instead, they're covered with thick slime. Fish are cold-blooded animals, so they use the environment to help control their body temperatures. They can move into warmer or cooler waters to help change their body temperatures. How are fish adapted to their environments? Some fish, such as the mackerel, travel in large groups called schools. Together, they try to stay safe from predators, including dolphins and tuna. The crocodile fish stays safe by using camouflage and hiding in its environment. It looks just like rocks nearby. The flounder also hides on the ocean floor. It has both of its eyes on the same side of its body so it can watch for predators above. The stingray has a poisonous stinger that it uses to protect itself. The pufferfish are species of fish that puff up to try and scare away predators. They're among the most poisonous animals in the world. Most fish have senses of sight hearing, touch, taste, and smell, just like humans. Sharks have a very, very sharp sense of smell. They also have special parts that sense the electromagnetic fields that all living things produce. Sharks can find prey that are far away or hiding. The sailfish is one of the fastest fish. They pin their fins to their bodies to keep them from dragging in the water. What is happening to some fish species? Fish live in freshwater habitats, like lakes, rivers, and ponds. They also live in saltwater oceans and in coral reefs. But the habitats of many fish species are changing. Coral reefs are dying because of pollution and higher water temperatures. When this happens, many species lose their homes. Pollution in the oceans and lakes causes problems for fish and other ocean animals. And overfishing is a problem in many parts of the world. Fish like the bluefin tuna are becoming threatened and may become endangered. Living things in the ocean are connected to each other. So if one thing becomes endangered, it can cause problems for other animals. 
I think Frank and Joey are safe here in their habitat. You want to feed them that? They don't eat cheeseburgers, Moby. Uh, they don't eat that either. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I really hope you enjoyed learning about fish today. Now, I will give you your assignment. Today is Friday, so if you printed this out or if you made this in your notebook, you should have the first four columns done. You had mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, so today we are doing fish. So I need you to list three to five fish. You can draw them if you want to also. Maybe draw a picture and write the name. I know a lot of people like to draw. And if you want to challenge yourself, you can try to draw a picture and explain how fish breathe underwater, what happens when they breathe water in, what goes in, what comes out. All right. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Monday or next week. <laughs> Bye.